Who were the Philistines, you might ask? An intriguing mystery of the ancient world, the Philistines were a people often misunderstood, their history and culture shrouded in the sands of time. Our story begins in the Aegean, around the year 1175 before the Common Era. An immigrant group, likely part of the confederation known as the Sea Peoples, made their way to the southern coast of Canaan. They were not invaders, rather, they were settlers bringing with them a unique culture that blended Aegean traditions with those of the Levant. As they settled into their new home, the Philistines began to form an ethnic state. By the 6th century before the Common Era, they had established a pentapolis, a group of five city-states, Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Ekron, and Gath. This was the heart of Philistine culture, a vibrant fusion of local and imported traditions. Yet the Philistines were not just peaceful settlers. They are perhaps best known for their conflicts with the Israelites, as detailed in the Hebrew Bible. From the period of the Judges to the days of Saul and Samuel the prophet, the Philistines and the Israelites clashed in a series of conflicts. The Philistines were formidable opponents, their control over iron production giving them a significant advantage in warfare. But despite their strength and resilience the Philistines could not withstand the march of empires. First came the Neo-Assyrians, subjugating the Philistine polity and incorporating it into their vast empire. Then, in 604 before the Common Era, King Nebuchadnezzar II of the Neo-Babylonian Empire dealt the final blow. The Philistine cities became part of his empire and later its successor, the Persian Empire. With this, the distinct ethnic identity of the Philistines began to fade. By the late 5th century before the Common Era, they had all but disappeared from the historical and archaeological record. Yet their legacy lived on, their distinct culture and history a testament to the vibrant tapestry of the ancient world. In this short intro we've delved into the fascinating history of the Philistines from their origins in the Aegean to their disappearance in the wake of empires, we've explored their culture, their conflicts, and their eventual assimilation into larger political entities. Now we will explore the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype, traits, and GED match results of two Philistines. Let's begin with the first individual from the city of Ashkelon in Israel. They are both from Israel. They are actually both from the city of Ashkelon. But this one has a Y-DNA R1B. Let's remember this Y-DNA. It's a very Indo-European Y-DNA to have. And we're going to discuss it a little bit later, the implications of this Y-DNA. But this is what he looked like. He's predicted to have brown eyes, snub-shaped nose, and black hair with minus a coat tool. Um, Y-Sec prediction for him is completely deranged. You can see Y-Sec is actually saying that he looked black. Um, but of course this um, very much contradicts Snipper Free prediction for skin tone where according to Snipper Free's prediction for skin tone he's got white skin which is what I'm inclined to believe. Um, really uh, he doesn't have much genotypes to go off uh, of to determine his phenotype but the big one is Herc2 where he does not have any derived variants and this is actually BH2 so he does not have BH2 so there is no reason to assume he had any kind of blue eyes or any kind of light eye or hair color uh, just based off this genotype alone and he also does not have EDAR which is an interesting note interesting thing to note uh, EDAR is a gene implicated in certain East Asian facial traits such as shell shaped incisors the epicanthic folds which he does not have he's got this genotype which increases the risk of dementia and Parkinson's disease uh, he's got this genotype which increases the risk of high blood pressure uh, he's got this genotype which increases the risk of obesity uh, he's got this genotype which actually greatly reduces the risk of autism. Looking at his genotype in DRD2, he seems to be heterozygous for the pro frenetine pro variation, so intermediate number of D2 dopamine receptors and intermediate risk of schizophrenia. Uh, when it comes to TAC1 variation, he's actually got A2A2, which is the normal or typical human genotype. It comes together with a higher or normal amount of D2 dopamine receptors and an average risk of various illnesses such as Parkinson's, tardive dyskinesia, ADHD. He's got warrior genotype in comt met variation, which means Valval higher COMT activity, and COMT is the enzyme that breaks up dopamine, so higher COMT activity means less dopamine in the brain, uh, problems with attention and motivation, however, advantages in stress resiliency, does not have uh, derived OXTR, no sociopath gene, this is what I call this, uh, the sociopath gene on my channel, and also uh, does not have derived EDAR, which is, I've talked about it previously, and uh, he's got this genotype which makes him seven times more likely to respond to certain antidepressants. He seems to have a predisposition towards being quite skinny and having a low BMI. Um, when it comes to other traits, he's got a high-risk score for basal cell carcinoma, a high-risk score for leukemia, 
uh, and he's got actually an average risk score for asthma. With uh, G25, it seems that for ancient groups he's resembling various Bronze Age Anatolians, and for modern groups he's most similar to Cypriots, uh, Greek Islanders, and Anatolian Greeks. He's getting modeled as a mixture of Anatolian Greek plus Sardinian plus Lebanese Christian plus Samaritan plus another Anatolian Greek with the mixed mode here. So he's clearly very East Mediterranean, um, maybe a little bit shifted towards Anatolia. And we see this here too, him scoring 18% West Asian. That's because of this Anatolian shift, right? Somebody who is just a Greek Islander is not going to score 18% West Asian. He's closest to Cypriots, followed by Lebanese Christians here. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Lebanese Drusia plus Sardinian or Lebanese Christian plus Sardinian. That's because relative to the Lebanese, he's got a shift towards the West Mediterraneans and Sardinians. And remember when I told you to remember his paternal lineage R1B? Well, this paternal lineage actually explains why he scores 4.5% step and almost 2% Northeast European with MZLPK16. That's because he actually does have step uh, in the European admixture. Maybe not a lot, it's not the majority of him, but it is a small part of him and it is actually the cultural... Uh, this, this part is culturally dominating because Philistines were in the European people. This is what he scores with MDLPK11. Here he doesn't score anything too interesting. He doesn't score any European hunter-gatherer. Uh, with Pond DNA LK10, this is an interesting result. He scores 9.5% European hunter-gatherer. However, uh, this is kind of on the low side, even for Anatolians. And he's closest to Lebanese, actually, followed by Cypriots. He's even closer to Lebanese than to Cypriots. That's kind of crazy to imagine. He's getting more of the mixture of Cypriot plus Iraqi Jewish. So, yes, more Southern, more Middle Eastern than even the Cypriots. Uh, with Pond DNA LK12, we see sort of more of the same. Only 0.5% European hunter-gatherer admixture. And it's kind of surprising that despite having this little European hunter-gatherer admixture out of Somali, his paternal lineage is entirely uh, European hunter-gatherer derived because R1B is a European hunter-gatherer haplogroup. And you can of course make the claim that R1B is a um, Indo-European haplogroup, but the thing is the earliest R1B is Samara hunter-gatherer and uh, another earliest instance of R1B is Baltic hunter-gatherer. So R1B, it's an Indo-European haplogroup that Indo-Europeans got from hunter-gatherers, right? So him having this lineage means he does have, have European hunter-gatherer heritage. Let's move on to the second individual. She is a woman, so no paternal lineage for her, no white DNA haplogroup for her. Uh, this is what she's predicted to look like, brown eyes, Greek-shaped nose and black hair. Uh, with my hair ID tool, she's predicted to have straight hair. Uh, and let's talk, talk about her genotypes real quick. So she does have the European light skin, lighter traits variation in LCC45A2. She does not have the hunter-gatherer blue eye and red hair and pale skin variant in IRF4. Uh, according to her genotypes in OCA2, it seems that she's most likely got darker genotype and it seems that she probably does not have BH2, which is why her prediction is to have brown eyes with my tool. Uh, she doesn't have any of the blue eye and blonde hair variants in TIR, and she doesn't have any ginger variants in MC1R. Uh, she also doesn't have BH4, and she's got darker eyes according to some of the other traits, uh, some of the other genotypes in OCA2. She also does not have East Asian EZAR, so very um, Caucasoid, Caucasian uh, facial traits. She's got this genotype which increases her risk of obesity and higher BMI. Uh, she's got this genotype in MTHFR which makes her less efficient at processing folic acid. She's actually uh, homozygous for the derived variant here which is super rare. You can see only 6% of code gen users have the same genotype as her. Uh, she's got a genoset which uh, causes lower heart attack, heart attack risk than average. Uh, she's got this genotype which greatly reduces her odds of type 1 diabetes. Now type 1 diabetes is already a super rare disease. Only 0.5% of Americans have type 1 diabetes. So she probably has like a 0.01% risk of type 1 diabetes. I don't know. Do the math. I'm not going to do the math right, right now. Uh, she's got this genotype which uh, makes her a better sprinter than endurance athlete. And uh, she's got this genotype which lowers her risk of sexual dysfunction when taking SSRI antidepressants. She's got warrior genotype in Komtswalmet variation, which means advantage in memory and attention tasks, more dopamine, less um, slower dopamine reuptake, um, lower 
and combed enzyme activity, which is the enzyme that breaks up dopamine, so more dopamine in the system. And she does not have EDAR, no derived EDAR, no East Asian facial traits, such as shell shaped incisors. And she does not have East Asian alcohol flush. Alcohol flush is one of those um, traits that a lot of Asians have, East Asian specifically, uh, which causes them to flush up. Their cheeks turn red when they drink alcohol. It's super rare, and it doesn't really occur outside of Eastern Asia. She's got a high genetic risk score for obesity. Uh, she's got a high genetic risk score for brain aneurysm. She's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease. And she's got a low or below average risk score for asthma. When it comes to G25, she's most similar to various Southern Italians and Greeks. But when it comes to ancient groups, she's actually most similar to Mycenaeans, which are in the European as well. Uh, so she's most similar to these Greek Mycenaeans in terms of uh, ancient compo ancient groups. When it comes to GED match, this is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. Uh, you can see she's scoring a lot less West Asian than the previous individual. He was scoring 19% West Asian. She's only got 12.5% West Asian, which is once again kind of high for Southern Europeans, but uh, it's much more typical for Southern Europeans than the previous individual who was very Anatolian in his ancestry. She's closest to South Italians and she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Cypriot plus Sardinian or Sardinian plus various uh, Eastern Mediterranean groups. And, you know, she clearly has more in the European admixture than the previous individual. She's scoring 9% step and almost 6% Northeast European with MDL PK16. Uh, with the Oracle still getting modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus various uh, East Mediterraneans, the Oracle is still not really showing this in the European admixture, but it is there. Uh, with MDL PK11, she's scoring 7.5% European Hunter Gatherer. So if Yamne, for example, is half in the European Hunter Gatherer plus half Caucasus, so she would be 7 times 2 or 15% Yamne in total. This is what she scores with Pandian LK12. Big difference from the previous sample. You can see she's scoring almost 18% European hunter-gatherer admixture. Um, she's still Mediterranean, of course, but 18% European hunter-gatherer admixture is very significant. And it's actually enough for her to score some Paltavka and Yamnea with the two-way oracle. Uh, with PonDNA LK10, you can see she's scoring mostly ENF and a little bit of Caucasus hunter-gatherer and a little bit of European hunter-gatherer as well. Uh, with the oracle, she's closest to Sicilians, followed by South Italians, followed by Toscans. Uh, Tuscany is in Central Italy. And relative to Toscans, relative to Central Italians, she's a little bit shifted towards Bedouins and the Middle East. She is uh, more Mediterranean, she is more Southern than Central Italian reference for Toscans here. This is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. I find it interesting that she's scoring 1.5% East Asian here. Uh, with the Oracle, she's closest to Albanians, followed by Sicilians, and she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of uh, Europe in Neolithic, which is European farmers, plus Lisgians, or a mixture of Albanians plus Anatolian Neolithic farmers. Uh, so she's quite Western, quite Anatolian Neolithic in terms of ancestry. Thanks for watching my video on these two Philistines. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And uh, you can download both of them, both of the files in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description. Peace out.